Hello. So for my work in the film business, I have kept quite a, quite a lot of uh, props and I made some historical movies. And uh, so I dug out uh, a box with historical objects. I think most of them are. And um, I want to I want to see what I can print today. Um, yeah, there's quite some nice objects in there. Some of them probably are really hard to print or might hurt the jelly plate. So what I'm also trying today is the Play-Doh as featured by uh, Created and Made Studios. Hi Shauna, love your channel. And I want to see how this can make an impression in the Play-Doh, which I then press on the gel plate. So I don't have to use these objects directly. So watch me do that on my XXL large jelly plate today. This is the first part of this session in which I am only testing the Play-Doh with the antique objects. In part two, I will create big prints with the XXL plate, as you can see here. I later worked out the prints with acrylic paints and colored pencils. The results you see here, but I have so much footage that this might even have a third part. I also want to emphasize that all of what I'm showing here, you can also create with acrylic paints. So let's see what we have here. Some wooden objects, a placemat made of plastic, a little chain from the 80s, a necklace, a nautilus, which is actually not antique, neither is the porcelain dog, a little toy gun, keys on rings, which I have tons of. This is an enlarged pfennig, which was the old currency in Germany before the euro came. And yes, they were that big. These two boxes don't have a relief. I will scan and print them to go on the jelly plate, but not in this video. I have a collection of old tools, which I love. An old British soap, a purse, a metal elephant from Thailand, some rusty pieces of something, a letterbox door opening. These are napkins from the 50s. I'm not even going to open this original package. Too much respect. An old crucifix my mother had will not use this in case anyone here has a problem with religion. The cassette and the videotape I have printed before and I want to mention Mark Yates again who has printed tons of surprising stuff in his videos. Check out his channel, he is gorgeous. This little doll leg I printed in plaster a while ago and it became an artwork of its own. More rusty things. This is an old gift wrapping textile band from the 60s and it has this relief Christmas pattern, which I think you don't get anymore. Another purse. Sewing tools, an old doll's cap, and here is the thing, no not here, hang on, here's the thing that I definitely want to try the play-doh on, because I don't want to lose this nice kid's dress by smearing it with etching ink. And the same, an old blouse of the same textile cloth. So now for the Play-Doh testing. Brayering the first edging ink on the jelly plate, Chabonel Black. The Play-Doh is a little hard to get out of its cup, so I'm using a spoon here. The model you see here is not antique, of course. It is a figure that I draw from the, to study anatomy. It is a good example how the Play-Doh works better than printing the object directly. 
I press it on and make sure that I get every muscle of the shoulder and surrounding areas, pressing the Play-Doh on the jelly plate. You have to press down a little bit to get all the muscles in contact with the plate, but not too much or you would lose the pattern you just picked up. I am picking up the muscle corner with a thick paper and this is the result. Very good, I think. Rolling the Play-Doh into a ball again and rolling it out again. You can reuse this endlessly. The paint will stay in it though, but it does in no way affect the next print. Trying the side of the face now. Look at the impression, how interesting. I think I pressed it just slightly too much, so the impression is not very impressive. Haha. <laughs> The ring and the key are something that can really cut the jelly plate, so that's another reason to try the Play-Doh. The camera unfortunately turned itself off, but this is the result on the paper. Same reason to try this piece of jewelry, and this is the result. The plastic placemat can also be transferred to the Play-Doh. Actually a very good impression. Picking up the surrounding paint with a tissue. This time I want to try to print the color that the Play-Doh picked up directly to the paper. Also, I am distorting the Play-Doh a little. That's another advantage. This leaves quite a dark print, which is nice. Now for the jelly print. This is lighter if you want it more subtle. And you can see one is the positive and one is the negative. So the Play-Doh gives you an extra option there. And I can of course also pick up color from the plate and print the placemat directly. So I have three options here. Two negatives and one positive. Or is it the other way around? Now for the exciting part. Is the Play-Doh gonna save my precious kid's dress? I'm just rolling it out for one of the shoulder straps. Can you say that? Shoulder straps? Hmm. Rolling out just enough for that strap. It works good, but you can see the little bit of yellow on the textile. And to tell you now, the Play-Doh leaves color on textiles and with an antique piece of cloth you will probably not be able to get them out. So don't do this if the textile is precious to you. So jelly print and direct Play-Doh print. The last thing I'm trying in this test, an old photo album, I think also from the 50s. You could probably print it directly and wash it off, as it's plastic material. But after decades, the plastic might have become porous and there would be paint sticking in the cracks. Play-Doh works fine, directly and indirectly. You can see the positive and the negative difference here. As the Play-Doh testing footage is so much and I didn't want to speed it up more, I am releasing this part first. Here you can see a little bit of part 2 coming up next week, in which I will be printing almost the whole kid's dress with Play-Doh and some of the antique props with it. 
And after I have done that, as usual, I will show you the workout with acrylics and color pencils. Thanks for watching and see you in part 2.